Thank you for watching another series of the Multi-Billionaire Empire Framework Series. Today we're going to go over cap rate, which is also called capitalization rate. This is a term used in the commercial real estate industry that allows you to compare average cap rates, average cash flow from one property type to another property type in different areas and different types of the same property from the new new property to the older properties of the same class so this video is going to cover that and give you examples of how to do the equations and come up with these numbers come up with the numbers when you look at a property and determine if it is a good buy or not and it's not the only thing you want to look at but it is a good basic idea of how to look at a property and compare is this property better to buy versus another property is this investment better than another investment or better than another property type investment so you could actually compare do I want to buy an apartment versus an office or versus a retail shopping mall at this time and the return of the money that I will get on it now one thing that capital capitalization rate does not take into consideration is the debt service or the payment of the loan this is just going to give you the the net operating income the cash flow so this is based on a person buying any property or this asset with full cash that's how this thing is able to be compared from one thing to the one class to another so you would take out your debt service or your payment out of the final net operating income just to let you know what your complete profit would be and then on another video I will do the tax benefits on apartments and how your net profit minus your payment then after tax what your real income is and then as well um, we can do another one on cash on cash and infinite revenue return revenue return on the location later on but I just want to get you the basics so you know what you have to work with and you're able to go out and find the properties you want to find and get things going and your first trick is to getting the one to five million dollar range apartments done if you're only sitting around one to two hundred thousand dollars cash in the bank if not or if not either way we're gonna pull zero money down pull it out you're looking for properties with equity off-market or seller financed properties these are easy and you can find them and the easy way to find them is go to your area look it up on LoopNet or Zillow or other classified places where you have commercial properties listed and you might want to look for apartments that are a bit run down and not kept up as well or at least look like they're little bit needing maintenance those types usually have uh, the owner on the property trying to do some work himself and those scenarios you can find those properties if you run around look look for them in town just look at them on Zillow, Zillow or find them and the owner usually will be on the property if it's not if it's got a if it has a realtor and you see that you see it you know from the classified ad is it not that great shape and it fits the price range you could go to that property or you could drive around and usually find them but the best quickest way is find off market because the guy's in on the game that's the type you want to go for or seller finance and you're going to contact them and then we're going to do loan and we're going to pull out cash on each scenario so you're making money on every deal now this cap rate video is going to help you calculate the cash flow once you find one and compare the properties so now what we're going to do is go over an example of two different properties, two, two apartments. One property A is going to say it has $100,000 net cash flow a year divided by the price or actually we're going to say the market value of this property is $1 million. So that gives you a cap rate 10%, which means you will make 10% on your money you made 10% on your money for the year. Now, is property A a better buy than property B? If property B costs $1.6 million, how much money are you going to make? Is it a better buy? So this is what the cap rate will allow you to determine. 
So on property B, the net income on property B is 150000 divided by $1.6 million, which gives you a cap rate of 9.37. So your return on that property is 9.37. So the better investment is property A. Now, not always is that the case. It depends on the location and what you have in mind for the business plan and how you're going to raise the income and lower the expenses, which I will get into later on another video that will tell you how to, to do that and raise the cap rate on all your properties and make it worth more money. So, you might buy property B or even if property B had a cap rate of like lower, like five or six, if you knew that there was construction in the area and the apartment is dropping because of construction or you know that they're going to put in a light rail or subway system or a development area that's going to increase or or if you're smart you would buy property b for those type of reasons or have a better plan because of where it is or a or b will work if you have a shopping mall that you're already a retail shopping center a strip mall that you're going to go ahead and upgrade that is maybe next next to your apartment which you're going to tur turn into a anchor facility shopping mall from a C class up to an A class by putting in the right tenants and developing that shopping mall out to where it's going to attract and change the whole neighborhood. So you have the shopping mall that's going to reclassify your apartment class because of the way you're changing the business plan and you're changing that area. You can go from a bad area and change it to a, a a C area or a lower class area to an A area if you have the right plan and develop it right. But for the sake of the argument, property A compared to property B, property A on paper is better at 10%. Now, we got to get it, get the plans to develop how, the, how you want to develop and pull the cash out and do the revenues, which is another video. So, the rela relationship between cap rate and market value. Now, if a property's market value drops, say, due to inflation or whatever, say it drops by 20%, property A, an example, uh, would be the same income at 100000 divided by $1.2 million cost. I'm sorry, if it drops, I mean, if it, if it drops, your cap rate is going to go up. Now, if the property goes up in value, because uh, the economy is doing great, the opposite is going to happen, which would say $100,000, you still have the same income at $100,000, divided by the value of $1.2 million because it went up, say, 20%, which you would think is a good thing. It actually dropped your capitalization rate. So, that's inverse. The reason is that if the market value goes up, up your property is improving and your capital capitalization rate goes down means you have less risk and it's actually better so that leads us to the next term risk everything here is based off of risk for example like the US Treasury bond is the safest thing you can invest in and so if you look at the average or just an example of the treasury bond you would get three percent return on your money per year so the risk is based off of that so like on your general million dollar property if you have say a net operating income of seventy thousand seventy thousand divided by one million gives you seven percent cap rate it means you've made seven percent return on your money for the year which means you took a 4% risk to get that type of money, whereas you could have got stability and stable money at 3%. But the whole trick and the whole key to getting rich is taking risks. Risk, risk, risk. The best investment, the best investors, the best hedge fund managers, the best people that make money always take risk. Everybody in life that's a multimillionaire, billionaire, multi-billionaire takes takes risk you have to get rich
I know, I hear this all day long. I got ripped off, I got ripped off, uh, blah, 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 blah. I want to make sure you're not a scam. Well, uh, if I was a scam, I wouldn't be putting all this stuff on the internet, and I wouldn't be the smart, I wouldn't know how to make money, and I wouldn't be telling people how to make money, because that's reality. The risk is, there is no risk. If you are a smart winner, you take risk, and you look at the long-term picture. You can't look at tomorrow and say, or today and say, I'm broke right now, I can't do shit, blah, 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 oh, life's bad, or I got ripped off 5,000 times, I don't want to send you a thousand bucks for repair because I've been ripped. Well, no, that's especially why you need to because you take risk by spreading your money out on other assets to generate more money and get more money coming in. And the less you have, the more you need to get your money on things that make money. So, that is the risk. So you want to find properties and you want to get into properties. You want to get into this and start taking all the risks on this. Taking risks on things that are assets that make money is not a risk because you're blowing money on your car. You're blowing money on your beer, your cigarettes and all this stupid shit going out or whatever you're doing. Or if you're a business owner, high interest rate daily pay loans which really suck and you just got the advice from some moron that is a kid on their net advertising they know what the hell they're doing when they don't when they're just copying off of people like me that have been around for 10 or 20 years and they don't know shit so the point is you take risks on things that are worth taking risks on you could even throw money in the stock market and be a total retard and make money on it versus you just bet Wasting money on a new set of rims or new cars. New cars build up credit and this is great, but I mean a lot of kids or younger people will buy cars and stuff and not use it for leverage to build your credit. A lot of people will buy things on like CPNs and AUs and things on CPN and all that stuff and that is a go-nowhere solution. That is a waste of money. You put it on things that give you a return on the money monthly. So I'm going over these examples about risk. Now, okay, so if you're putting in an apartment, even if it's a, you could find apartments or like fourplexes for even like 100,000, well, maybe not 100, actually I have seen studio apartments uh, like fourplex for like 150,000, 100,000 in certain areas, but you'd want to start out with as high as ones you can get because all the money you get, the extra cash flow you have, you're going to use it to put in other asset classes. The more you get... And you fill up your framework, the more it, more it expands. You can start out small and go from there. So, if you have a million dollar property, and say the rents drop, and you only make a net income of twenty thousand that year, you got you got a two percent cap rate. But you may have lost money one year, but that's say if you're a beginner retard investor with no knowledge or no nothing i mean which is very rare but say you had one bad year it doesn't matter because you got the property ideally on 25 30 year loan or re refinanced on it i mean you still got a chance and you have ways to make money or generate more money and if you listen to what i'm saying i will show you how to put raise the income and lower the expenses and get the property to be worth more money and generate more money which is actually easy and relatively quickly. Now, say if your maintenance cost goes up and you only generate $40,000 versus keeping the same income. So 40000 divided by a million gives you a cap rate of 4%. Now, if you're on your game, some, some years you're going to put more money in the property and cap rate may change, but it doesn't really matter. It matters on the overall equation and you making money on your portfolio and your plan. So, okay, again, now if market value drops, and you only pulled off like a total of like 70,000 a year, that is gonna give you a cap rate of 8%, which is actually more income. So now we're gonna to go to the next page and just re, re, recap the cap rate. <laughs> so a more stabilized property, i.e. a new property in a good location is a low cap rate and higher price that is like your trophy property that's the properties you would want like in san francisco the high high dollar expensive stuff you want those you want to change those make the income go up and keep them and all that kind of stuff but in your investment beginnings you would probably wait to get into that level as you have 
gained more knowledge and you've gained more cash and more of a base to stabilize your bridging off of and ability to get into bigger properties which isn't very long it doesn't take long to get into the 20 million range it only takes like well five hundred thousand dollar cash i can still pull and get people into 20 million dollar properties but the cash helps cover a lot of things as in making it appear as you've been a full-time professional investor and look like you have a history even though appraisals and things like that surveys etc do cost third-party things cost money you pull your cards right you can pull it off now back to cap rate the lower price properties which are more risk have higher um, chances of vacancy and in probably worse areas of town at times or worse condition or older to have more maintenance issues is a lower price property and a higher cap rate now inflation and market values that drop your solution would be um, to raise occupancies you want to stick with the average nicer you want to stick with the average rental income a little little higher than average not much but average high so like an apartment complex your average depending on the city if it's a midwest average city you might be around say you might i mean if you want to stick with the low average or middle average like 800 900 a month maybe a thousand you want to stay away from the luxury and stay away from I mean the super high and the super cheap and do that because when inflation happens and the economy goes bad it's gonna be flooded with more tenants so no matter what you're gonna be making money the whole time and it if you do it right where you cut expenses raise income offer better services better property and you keep your operational costs in check which we'll go over in the next video then you will outdo the other apartments in the area Again, that's comparison. The cap rate is a comparison against other property classes. So you can determine whether an apartment is better investment than an office or a retail shopping mall is better than a hotel or a motel. So lower cap rate equals a higher price property. A higher cap rate equals a lower price property. So a buyer wants a high cap rate to buy a lower price property and a seller wants a low cap rate to get a higher priced property so once you get in the property you're gonna raise the cap rate you're gonna you can raise the income and lower expenses and get the cap rate up but it won't matter I mean that's what you want so when you sell it you're gonna raise the price to sell it you know a lot higher than what you're running your cap rate at so the cap rate will be lower when you go to sell it so the three levels or the three categories of average cap rate comparisons are the macro level which is your differences between cities the cap rates within each city like San Francisco has a very low cap rate because the development and building in San Francisco is very low and limited so all your properties there are your trophy properties and they are more money now you go to like Puerto Rico your cap rates are super high because it's high risk and the properties are cheap and then your last classification is your property type as in asset type as in like um, hotel versus motel versus apartment so these are the actual cap rates for like San Diego is like 4.25%. Clear down to Detroit, which is high risk because it's, you know everything about Detroit. You're looking at 7.25. And these are averages, national averages, which you can find on the internet. You look it up. There's um, commercial real estate companies that do the averages and you get that. So, okay, now the class is the class A through class D type of building so like an apartment or office building is depending on the age of the building and the location so like your newer properties is your a your older is b and your oldest is your c and your d what you want to look for is probably c and d range with equity older so it's easier to get into and start out with and 
doing um, developments and building brand new properties and brand new apartments and hotels requires giant down well not giant but it's that average like 20 percent down payments or 10 or if you do private equity equity you give up part of your you give up the majority of your ownership for a larger portion of money but that is all later on after you've built up your portfolio and you got to a certain phase but first you're going to concentrate on your your cd properties maybe b something that's got age on it equity and preferably off market that's what you're going to look for so um this is just different your a through d or a through c level of, for example, this is apartments, and it's just showing how a cap rate is higher on an older apartment versus a new apartment class, class A, A, B, C. So if you're building a business and you're generating, you want to build your core businesses, you probably want to look at um, getting all of your office locations in like C locations because it's cheaper rent and you can make the office just as nice, but you have cheaper overhead then as the time as the, the business grows and you build it out because you can get more space cheaper on a class C building but as your business grows and starts making more money you would go to the class A building and have the real plan and the cash flow coming in so that's your property type risks now the differences between all these classes why well as I mentioned earlier people are going to go to apartments when the economy goes down because they have to have a have a place to live so they're more stable that's why they have lower cap rates now the higher cap rates are going to be like your retail offices industrial and your hotels because like your retail offices I mean you retail like shopping malls and offices more businesses are going to go out of business and it's harder to fill them up with occupancy Hotels flourish in a strong economy because you got more corporate companies sending people on different travels and then people doing more travels. But corporate traveling is the highest amount or 60% of the income is generated from your hotel, which is going to give you your average daily rates in your motels. Motels, it's going to be apartments and motels basically at the same time. Hotels are going to be the next investment. Apartments, motels, and retails are all the same. You probably start with apartments get a motel apartments maybe three three apartments one motel or two motels then you're going to go into the retail shopping centers the motels are actually pretty easy to get into as well because they're between one to five million one to, well definitely one to five million it's always almost always owner operated and they are on the property and they're doing the same doing all the work so they're easy to get into and pull out cash especially one to one to seven million easy you can just drive up and start conversation and get into them when they're not even for sale especially if you become to know the motel owner or whatever but the motels you got to be careful as well um, with departments I mean you have to have a business plan how to change change it and on a motel you're gonna renovate it a bit upgrade it and it's gonna be an average no-name motel and you're gonna turn it into a flag anchor motel and that means you're gonna get a contract or licensing with a flag company and change it to like a motel six or red roof Inn or whatever type of motel you can get a contract with and then you're going to give them part of your profit but it's going to generate more money because it's a class a property versus what you bought it at as a class c no name no brand property that's how you change a motel and make some cash and you pulled out money in the very beginning and the guy wanted out of it because he's a foreigner and he's been doing it and he's sick of it so that's how a lot of them are ran and that's how you get into them and the financing on a motel is slam dunk easy and probably easier than an apartment but i'm saying you got to go with apartments first because you got to get your hand on your mind on income and expenses and overall concept of how to run your business the motel is a little more work because you got to concentrate it concentrate on it and be on it more because it's a average daily rent return and it's just going to require more attention in the beginning than the apartment which is easier to put on autopilot from the very beginning and the motel once you know what you're doing it's good but it's bad if you get stuck on it and you're trying to manage it and you don't know what you're doing 
Okay, so cap rates and compared to class, uh, the apartments is low and retail is high, high risk. It's low risk to have an apartment in town versus an apartment on the outskirts. Okay, so how do interest rates affect cap rates? So interest rates, when interest rates go up, cap rates go up and the market values go down. So basically like inflation, like I was just saying, recession, it's going to cause the market values to go down and your cap rates to go up. Now, the coefficient or the actual number is usually of 0.7 per, per percentage of interest rate things go up. Not always, but that's a good rule of thumb idea. Um, now, if you're going to buy a property and you want to say, hey, is this good property? What price should I pay for the property? This is just one way to determine if, if it's a good buy or not and how much money you want to put on a property compared to what you really have. So this example, the property say he's selling the property of a 10 unit apartment for 600,000 bucks and he's only making a PWAC 30,000 a year. So you would say 30,000 divided by 600,000 gives you a cap rate of 5%. Now, when you look at the 5% cap rate, like in our example, depending on what city, back here is like low in its apartment say 5.25 and it's in town depending on the city and where it's at if it was a class A building you would say well that is pretty low and other apartments in that area for the same thing or making or worth more I mean or worth less and you compare it that way. So if you say, well, I want it. And then as a, an investor, you can say, well, even if his numbers were right, I don't, I'm not making enough money to make it worth my time because you're taking a 3%, well, 2% risk over the treasury bond, which you could put money in that versus this. So that's only making 2% profit for your risk. So you'd say, well, I want to make, say, I don't know, 10% on my money or I want to make, say, worst case scenario, because you have a plan, you say you want to make 7% on your money. And so you take the net operating income divided by 7%. That's going to say, well, I could pay $428,000 for this property. And later on, when you realize I want to put in, you want to say I want to pull out 100000 because I want to do upgrades or whatever, or just get cash, that's what you would put into the equation. Now, these are small numbers and small properties just for the example normally you would you want to stick with things above a million I mean even that's pretty low but to start out with if you just get your foot in the door we'll get you in there get some cash maybe pull out one to two hundred thousand on a baby deal just so you get used to it and then you get the framework and then when you close your first deal you can get into more deals because you have confidence and you know it's easy so this goes over the cap rate the cap capitaliza, capital capitalization capitalization rate or cash flow and cash flow as the way it is looked at by the market as a whole the cap rate lets you compare property to property in different classes and different cities and what investment is a good investment versus a bad investment and the only thing is on the cap rate is that the net operating income on a property does not count your debt payment, your debt service, the amount of payment you made for the property per year. So, like on some of those equations, like uh, so on a $60,000 net income, you may have like $15,000 a year payment. Or like on a $20 million property, you may be paying like, you know, uh, 100,000 a month on your payments so you know that's you're paying like one two million bucks a year who cares it's big money so on another video which I'll do later on well I'll teach you how to do the cash on cash return and the infinity revenue return which tells you basically how much money you put in and how much money you're gonna get out which is a whole nother video but cash cap rate for the most part right now is about all you really need to know 
a little bit and then have a business plan to be able to pull off buying your first commercial property. That would be an apartment, preferably of like 10 units or more. So you really want to go start looking around at properties on LoopNet and Zillow in your area or like a small real estate portfolio of say like 10 duplexes or something or five duplexes or something of that nature anywhere from one to five to ten million dollar range we're gonna pull off zero money down using the seller seller being cooperative by him either carrying a second back or if we write the numbers up he wouldn't even carry a second back and you're getting cash or we refinance his property that he already has and he's cooperative and we put him on a assumable loan and then we can quick claim and put a clause in the contract and therefore make you become owner and get him off of the property completely scot-free with no strings attached and he's gone he got his price a little probably you give him a little more than he wanted for doing it and boom you walk into the property as your first real estate commercial deal once that's done then we could close on one every week from you know at progressively five million and up once you got your first one done then all of it goes like downhill snowball so therefore that concludes the cap rate and what it really means now stay tuned for my next video that's going to go over how to increase the income and lower the expenses to raise the cap rate and make money off all your properties.